What's up guys, welcome back to Recreational Sniper. Tonight I'm gearing up for tomorrow. Um, we are going out and we're going to start shooting some long range with the 308s. So I'm taking the, the Ruger American Tactical. Uh, I've been calling it the Ruger Amtac, just for short. And it also sounds kind of cool I guess if you're into that. But basically this is a Ruger American in a Magpul Hunter stock, uh, as you can see here. And um, this is the Tallow Distributor Exclusive. So <clears throat> that's about all there is to it. It's basically a Ruger American. The only thing I've done to this, modified it from uh, the factory as far as anything internal is I changed the rebound spring from the stock one to uh, the M Carbo rebound spring kit and that gave me a trigger pull of about two and a quarter pounds which is really nice uh, better than the factory factory was set at four point about four four and a half pounds so it was a pretty nice upgrade um, I also changed the rail out on this. It had a zero uh, MOA rail, and I changed it to a custom 40 MOA rail from EG EGW, um, which is roughly like 11 and a half mils, or it comes out to 11.6 mils, so 11 and a half mils. And I've got the SWFA SS scope that is a fixed 12 power and it has a total adjustment range of 40 mils. So if I can divide that by a two, that gives me 20 usable and then add the 11.6 that comes with this. So I have 31.6 usable mils of adjustment on this scope. And then uh, up front, I've got a Ultradyne Pegasus muzzle brake. And then I have just a Caldwell XLA uh, notch leg fixed bipod. So it doesn't cant or tilt or anything. It's just a simple setup. Um, and then uh, I do have uh, the Magpul. I think it's like the MSR. I don't know what the hell this thing's called. But anyways, it's one of those uh, quick adjustable ones. It's got the little deal here. You can quickly uh, lengthen it or quickly shorten it if you want to. It's super nice. I really like it. Um, and if you're wondering what case this is, this is the Savior uh, Urban Warfare case. And it is actually a double rifle case and it does come with a divider, a foam padded divider that goes uh, if you're carrying two rifles. I don't ever think I'm going to plan on putting two rifles in this bag, so I took it out. Alright, so um, for tomorrow, I've got some charts printed out. I started with uh, the area we're shooting in. Our altitude is going to range from about 1,200 feet to almost 1,700 feet. So I printed out um, these charts, and I have them set up in one-inch increments of mercury, right? So uh, my normal, you know... Typically at sea level, you've got 2992, which is close to 30 inches of mercury. So my baseline chart is set for 2992. And then my next chart, like this one here, is set for 29. And then the next chart after that is set for 28. So 29 inches of mercury um, is on average about 900 feet, 899 feet. And then 28 inches of mercury is pretty much uh, right around 1,900 feet. Um, it come out to 1,910, which is fine. Uh, so <clears throat> these are just example charts of a hypothetical scenario. If I was at that altitude with the muzzle velocity that I normally get at my altitude, which muzzle velocity does not change with alt altitude. It uh, pretty much stays the same no matter how high or low you are in the atmosphere. Um, the only thing that really affects uh, muzzle velocity change would be 
extreme temperature changes with the ammunition like if your ammunition was physically zero degrees fahrenheit or physically 100 degrees fahrenheit at the time that it was fired that is going to affect the way the powder burns and you're going to get uh, some odd results coming from that so but typically in our area we're not really going to see those types of extremes maybe a handful of times a year um, and tomorrow uh, the high tomorrow is going to be like 92 so i've got this chart set up at 80 degrees which is the last time we, we went and tested this ammunition was at 80 degrees and i got my muzzle velocity average recorded for 80 degrees and that's what we're going to go off of it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be pretty close so the reason why i've got a chart set at you know basically for an altitude of 900 feet and then one set for 1900 feet is because the area we're shooting in is about uh, one firing position is going to be at uh, 16 or 73 feet and the other firing position is going to be at 1523 feet so I will be able to kind of interpolate between these two charts but because I had some time today and also had the internet at my disposal um, I went ahead and actually did the drop calculations for the altitude uh, altitudes we're going to be shooting from uh, one at 1673 feet and then one at 1523 feet and <clears throat> and then I also took the coordinates uh, for the direction we're going to be shooting the two or the two different coordinates of where we're going to be shooting from and where we're going to place the target and also calculated that out and got our azimuth so on our compass here we can use that to calculate our vertical Coriolis uh, though we probably aren't actually going to be shooting far enough to need to do that we're probably going to do it anyways just for practice because I think it's important if you plan on shooting further than a thousand yards you probably want to know how to do that so but I already did re uh, calculate all this stuff up like I said and at different altitudes, your uh, gyroscopic stability factor is going to change for your bullet. So I like to, since I'm shooting Burger bullets, I went on Burger's website and they already have the data uh, for that bullet, uh, you know, on their website. And you can use their stability calculator uh, and it changes with altitude. So. As you can see at 1673 feet we have a 2.20 stability factor and then at 1523 we got a 2.18 uh, whereas on this chart at 900 feet it's 2.13 and on this chart at 1910 feet it's 2.22 so it does change with altitude and that is going to affect your um, it's going to affect your spin drift so you need to make sure you get your stability factor correct for your spin drift and your altitude correct so it needs to be all of your stability factor needs to be appropriate for the altitude you're in uh, for doing the calculations for your spin drift otherwise it's going to give you some numbers that aren't you know aren't 100 percent useful they you know they may be a little off and uh you know at that distance if we're shooting a thousand yards at 900 feet our drift is going to be about 11.3 inches and if uh, we're shooting at 1900 feet it's uh, going to be just a little bit more than that so it's actually really really close at that distance even though they're only uh, they're basically a thousand feet apart in altitude but I went ahead to get a really, really specific setup. I went ahead and developed these charts for the actual altitude that we're shooting from. Now, where we're shooting from, we're actually going to be shooting downhill. So um, we are gonna have to deal with shooting through different pressure zones, but um, that's really only gonna affect it so much. It's not gonna be like an extreme amount of change. Uh, but it is going to be just a, a little bit amount of amount of change. Um, also, with these two charts, I went ahead and added on a time of flight scale um, because you need that. 
you need to know the time of flight to be able to calculate your spin drift, your horizontal Coriolis, and your vertical Coriolis. You have to have the time of flight down. So I went ahead and did that at that altitude, at that temperature, and the muzzle velocity that my gun is running. So, um, of course, this is not gonna, none of this stuff is gonna work for anybody else's gun, and any, you know, even if they were shooting the exact same bullet and had the exact same length of barrel, if it was a different gun, uh, some of this stuff's probably gonna be different. There's just too many variables that will change uh, from gun to gun, even if they were identical and you were using identical uh, ammunition. Uh, your muzzle velocity is almost guaranteed not to be the same. Um, so moving on from that, uh, I'm keeping those with me because I am going to need them to hopefully accurately dial up and be able to hit the target. Now, some of you guys are like probably thinking that this is way too overboard and I really don't need all this stuff to be able to hit a target at a thousand yards or even you know 1500 yards and you're right i don't need this stuff to be able to do that if i'm okay with making a second or third or fourth or fifth or tenth or twelfth shot um, what this is for is for attempting to be able to make a first round impact at any distance okay so that's what it's for It's like really precisely calculating it's more than just you know trying to read the wind and then calculating your uh you know dialing up your elevation this is actually taking into account some other factors that most people up to a thousand yards don't worry with so this is for first round impacts on targets at extreme ranges okay this is not for just going to the range and having fun this is a work in progress and you know they this is likely going to change a little you know with testing and recording data out in the field it's going to change a little but basically the whole point of being a sniper is not to have to make a second shot a correction and have to make a second shot because if you miss your target and uh, you know it's a live target if you miss your target with the first round and you just kind of miss it but it realizes it's being shot at it's going to move and so it's not just going to stand there so the whole point of this is to uh, not have to make any correction after the first shot like you want to hit the target on the very first shot that's the whole point um, and that's kind of what I want I'm wanting to bring to you guys wanting to teach you guys how to do is uh, with recreational sniper here is to be able to make first round impacts at any range as long as you're you're capable and as long as your weapon system is capable of doing so is that's the whole point of being a sniper is first round impacts at any range on any size target pretty much so yeah that's the whole point of this and I know this may be like way overboard and if you're one of those people that's like no nah, that's just too much i'm okay with you know throwing lead down range until i figure it out uh by correcting you know based on where my bullets hit then this may not be for you this is uh this is a very highly specific type of uh mathematical problems trajectory trigonometry that sort of thing and even uh the you know all the weather and stuff involved in it so very very complicated and it took a take a very long time i've been working on learning this stuff for over a couple of years now and i think that at this point i barely have a grasp of what is exactly going on but i feel like the more i work on it the better it's getting and the more i'm actually understanding so if you guys are wanting to make first round impacts on any any target at any range then stay tuned and keep watching so i'm gonna put that aside for now it's kind of getting boring for you guys i'm sure and we're going to start talking about loading out this bag for tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. That's the shoulder strap that comes with the bag, the single shoulder strap. Uh, tomorrow, with the amount of walking we're probably going to end up doing, I'm probably going to use the backpack straps. 
So I'm gonna leave that here. All right. So, like I said, uh, I got some tools and equipment here to help us out uh, with that chart because having that chart is not the end all be all. We still gotta be able to do the calculations out in the field. And to do that, we are going to need a scientific calculator, one that will is capable of doing trig functions. This is a Casio FX 300 ES Plus. Uh, they're like $20 at Walmart. Well worth the money. These calculators are super, super durable. Um, not much more than that to say about it, but it will do all the functions that we need. And for 20 bucks, not a bad way to go. All right, uh, you could go in the, into the higher end stuff. I mean, I think you can get a TI-30 for like the same price, around 20 bucks. Or if you wanted to go like super high end and get the ba most badass graphing calculator that will actually show you a trajectory on a, you know, on a graph, uh, you could go with like a TI-83 or something. But you know, then you're getting up there like the $120, $130 calculator. Um, I use Google Earth to develop those charts. So uh, basically use Google Maps and Google Earth to find the uh, to find the coordinates, the longitude and latitude for where we're going to set up and where we're going to shoot to. But I'm also bringing the GPS. This is a Rhino 755T and I will use this to confirm altitude and to confirm location uh, because the you know, the coordinates that I got off of Google Earth or Google Maps may not be accurate. You never know. And this may give me a different reading. And we'll test, uh, if they are different, we'll test uh, both readings when we run our ballistic software. And we will see if, uh, which, which one is actually giving us the best result. So, uh, GPS, we are bringing the Kestrel. This is a regular Kestrel 5000, not the super expensive one. Doesn't have the ballistic software in it because basically I'm developing my own ballistics, uh, you know, data using my own inputs and using uh, JBM ballistics online. Um, and that has to do with, you know, being able to track muzzle temperature, uh, ammunition temperature and muzzle velocity variation that way better because uh, these things, even with the ballistic software, they're very, very good, but they don't have the ability to input variations in muzzle velocity due to ammunition and uh, ammunition ambient air temperature changes. Because, you know, as that stuff changes, it can tend to change your muzzle velocity, and and then you're going to have like way, way down range is going to change the way your bullet impacts high or low and that sort of thing. So, I'm going to bring the Kestrel with us. Uh, bringing a laser thermometer and the purpose of this is to uh, check our temperature on our ammunition and our rifle so when we try to you know when we're looking at the charts and our temperature you know instead of, like our charts are set at 80 degrees because that's pretty much the data I have so far recorded and we start out shooting it starts out at 70 degrees and then when we finish shooting maybe it's 90 degrees We'll be able to keep track of that and uh, keep track of the changes as far as our impacts on target or near the target go, depending on, you know, what all happens. Um, microphones for filming. So this company, I've been using these guys, uh, these microphones for a while. Uh, come with two microphones, a splitter, and some extensions. And I don't know, I think it was like 50 bucks or something, but these things are awesome i don't know if you guys have noticed but the sound quality is infinitely better than it used to be when with making these videos so go ahead and pack that in there plus it's in a you know a nice neoprene foam uh case so it kind of protects some of the other stuff so i'm gonna say that that one's all packed up there um a couple extra magazines really don't have to have these the uh factory five round magazines more than enough honestly for like our purposes of just extreme range target shooting out in the woods it's not like we need extra rounds in the mag just to hit a target out there you know we got plenty of time we got all day we can reload no problem so but i am going to take them with me and you know 
maybe I will check on some feeding on these to see if they feed well. All right, so I'm gonna bring three boxes of ammo, which technically is two and a half boxes. There's 50 rounds of ammo. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it, but 50 rounds of ammo, I think will be plenty enough for tomorrow. Will this fit in there sideways? Oh, it will. But I don't think all three of them will fit in there that way. So, I may have to stick two of these guys in there and then maybe something else and then stick the other one in a different pocket. Yeah. Let's see. Heck, we can just lay that in there. We got our paperwork here uh tools you know you never know what's going to go wrong out there so some extra bits the torque wrench set you can never leave the house with the, without this thing if you're going to the gun range even bring the dang torque wrench set it's not that much extra weight especially having the peace of mind to say that or to know that you know if something goes wrong and something gets a little out of whack uh we can re-torque it properly out in the field instead of having to just do it by feel um and then we got our dope book and this is just kind of where we write notes down and muzzle velocities and that sort of thing we are bringing a chronograph with us um, but even though it's not super super uh required out there in the field but we are going to bring a chronograph with us all right um and then range finder got to have a range finder and you really need a range finder that is good enough to reach your target so for us in our uh where we found to go shoot at we have a range up to 1900 yards so we got a 4,000 yard range finder um, the reason why is because range finders as good as they are uh you pretty much if you want a reliable reading at a certain distance you need a range finder that's capable of ranging twice that distance just in case your batteries get low or, or that sort of thing uh, because when they start getting low they start doing weird things so if you're wanting to be able to range a target at 500 yards you need a thousand yard range finder if you want to be able to range a target up to 1900 yards where we might be shooting well we need a 3800 yard range finder they don't make those, so closest thing out there is a 4,000 yard range finder, and this is a Ranger, or a, sorry, a Vortex Razor HD 4,000 yard range finder. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of repacking here. I think I'm gonna put that in there. Let's see. I kind of don't want the buttons on this kestrel getting pushed because of pressure so I may take it out of there and put the range finder in there with the GPS range finder GPS uh, thermometer uh, that's probably not gonna fit so we'll do that and that pocket Let's see. I don't want, like I said, I don't want the buttons getting depressed on this because it will turn on. And yeah, I think there's plenty of room to stick it in there sideways beside that. And we're good to go. We can throw that in on top for a little extra padding. So there we go. We got our bag set up. We got everything in here. Uh, necessity wise except for ink pens I just thought about that man I need an ink pen in here so at least one pen that way we can record data out in the field all right so we got a rifle got ammo got our kestrel our 
ballistic drop tables, we got range finder, we got, uh, rain, you know, got our notebook, we got our thermometer. Oh man, we got a whole bunch of stuff in here. So, tools, gotta have those. And I'd say that that bag is all ready to go. And we're weighing about 25-ish pounds, 30 pounds maybe. So not too bad. Um, back in here, stuffed in here, I just got our kind of tucked in inside, but backpack straps. That's one of the cool things about these bags. So there you go, guys. We are set up and ready to go tomorrow. Uh, just got to load that in the back of the truck and load up the uh, spotting scope because that's one of the other things that you're probably going to want to have is a spotting scope um, and for the most part you don't have to go too crazy with a spotting scope uh, mine doesn't have a ranging reticle in it so not super great for calling corrections uh, if you miss a target but you know if you're pretty good with your spatial awareness, you can uh, guesstimate how far misses are and be able to call uh, corrections. So, with that being said, uh, I'm going to get all loaded up and we'll see you guys tomorrow. So, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and maybe learned a little bit. Maybe picked up a few things, maybe some ideas on some stuff to bring with you. Um, besides that, it's going to be hot tomorrow, so cooler uh and some cold drinks for sure definitely some water maybe some gatorade uh so we'll see you guys tomorrow thanks for watching